Hi and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and uh, Plastic Models for Beginners, the Tamiya 2.5 ton 6x6 cargo truck. So where I left off as I had done the um, wash, a uh, dark wash on the bottom and now we need to do the uh, start working on the weathering on the upper part. So the first thing I want to do is, you know, the upper part is pretty much a uh, kind of monotone Tamiya XF62 olive drab, and I want to bring out some of the highlights. And what I'm going to do to do that is I've already mixed some up here in these handy dandy little uh, Tamiya bottles that I got from somewhere. But I used olive drab. XF62 and XF60 dark yellow, which is uh, kind of the equivalent of uh, the German Dunkelgelb. And I mixed them in a 60 40 ratio 60% olive drab, 40% dark yellow, just to lighten it up a little bit. And you can probably tell by the bottle color here. In comparison to the, uh, the vehicle that it is a little bit lighter so I've already started a little bit on this side but what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush just the highlights um, with this uh, I think it's called a filigree brush it's kind of rounded and it's just it's just an inexpensive golden tackle on thing I got it at local Hobby Lobby uh, but it works good for these purposes now as you can see, the lid of my paint jar here is clean, but yet my paint is mixed up. Well, I have one of these, and anything will work, but I like these. They're stainless steel uh, paint stirs from Tamiya. Uh, they have this flat paddle on the end. You just stick it down in there and just twirl it around like that, and it'll mix the paint up. It also has this cool little scoop thing that you can use for scooping paint, or sometimes I use it for scooping up uh, pigments, dry pigments. Uh, but it's just a real handy tool. They're real cheap. Um, I ordered mine online because nobody in, around here carries this kind of stuff. But I ordered them with some other stuff. And it was pretty inexpensive and well worth it. I've got two of them. But anyway. So what I'm going to do is uh, just get a little bit of the paint on here. And then rub most of it off on a paper towel. Just leave it enough just leaving enough so that I can do some uh, uh, dry brushing and basically that's just very gently flicking it over the raised details sometimes you can use it on the edge or flat depending on what you're doing I'm kind of going crosswise the details so it'll just pick up the edges and as you can see it's highlighting just the edges of the boards and the rivets the hardware and if it looks a little bit stark in places don't worry about it because uh, further um, weathering is going to tone it down even more Try not to get it on your colors, not with this anyway, because, uh, you know, tail light wouldn't exactly have green highlighting on it. And all it's doing is just bringing out some of the detail, giving a little bit of contrast to the base color to make the details pop a little bit more. Now there's all kinds of different ways to do kind of the same thing. This is just a way I like to do it. It's, I'm familiar with it. I've been doing it for years and it works for certain things. And this is one of them. Okay. So that's basically what I'm gonna do on the whole model, hitting the details, um, you know, just to kind of give it some variation in the color. So I'll do that a little bit and then come back and show you what I've got done so far. All right, the next part I'm gonna do is uh, pin wash. And what I've created here is it's not 
totally black. It's mostly black, but it's got a little bit of uh, uh, the black 502 Optiloon and some brown wash. Just enough brown wash to make it just not quite black. And as you can see here, how translucent it is just by doing it on the side of this clear thing here. That's one of the reasons I like using this clear thing. So it gives me a good idea how to gauge my my wash. See what it's going to look like. I'm not going to adjust it accordingly. And I'm using this little brush here. And as you can see, it's got a W on it. So I only use these for washes. So got that mixed up. Another little tip. Um, because these are so light and I like to be able to smash out some of the uh, um, wash, the excess wash off of the thing so I don't flood it too much since this is a pin wash. Um, I just tape it down to my... Uh, blotter paper here so just basically get some uh, get some paint on here and then just touch it to the detail that you want to highlight and again if some of this stuff looks stark it's all gonna blend in later and you don't necessarily have to pin wash everything just certain things I want to kind of stick out more like bolts and you know bigger joints and stuff like that <clears throat> and just go around the vehicle highlighting all this stuff And you'll learn how to control this stuff a little bit more as you use it. If you barely touch it, just a little bit of the paint will flow. You touch it a little bit longer and it'll more will come off and flow a further distance on the the detail in question. Just like that. Right in here. It just starts bringing out all the details so when you start doing more weathering and hit more of the highlights it's going to give a little bit more depth and three dimensionality Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go around the vehicle just hitting highlights like I'm showing right here. Let the, uh, let the paint do its thing or the uh, the wash do its thing and come back 
All right, so I got the pin wash done on the whole thing, and now comes the experimentation stuff because um, I've got some new products here that I got a while back that I haven't tried yet. Vallejo Thick Mud, it's acrylic. I've got light brown, and I've got uh, brown. So I'm going to start with the light brown since that would be a little drier, I think. And I've already put some on the vehicle right here and I'm gonna use the stuff in the lid first basically I'm just using a ratty brush and uh, I'm just gonna start dabbing it on and the nice thing about this is you know again I've never I've never used this stuff so this is we're gonna learn how to use this together today but I'm putting it on thick somewhat and it gives it a um, now that stuff on there is experiment stuff so we'll not talk about that just yet but get this all caked in there around the suspension and stuff keeping in mind it's going to be thicker and gloppier around where the wheels are spinning so you don't want to go globbing up too much in there there will be some but not not as bad and just keeping it kind of random now this is this is just the first layer of this stuff now I'm also going to put some on this mud guard here kind of stark right now but I think it's gonna tone down a little bit once we do the next part just put this all around the axles and stuff and keep in mind there's not gonna be a whole lot on this because you know that thing spins pretty fast and it's you know it would kind of spin some of that junk off especially the loose wet stuff some up underneath here like that get some let's see a little bit on here that would kick up from the from the road this is just going to be kind of a thin layer and you're not going to see underneath here so this is just more more uh, to give it some color keep in mind we're going to be doing more up here so I don't want to get too much on there for this particular effect It's obviously going to be some kicked up underneath here from the tires and you're thinking wow we're covering up all that other stuff we did well that's part of it because not all of it's going to be totally covered up but the stuff you can see you don't have to worry about you know well, why do I put the pin wash on why do I put the sludge wash on why do I you know you don't have to worry about that because get some up on top of these areas here because it kind of sling up and kind of pack on there and once this dries up good and we're gonna put some other colors on it 
so it's not totally monotone. The tops of this stuff here is going to be kind of caked with it pretty good just because it's going to, gravity is going to help it just kind of settle in there. Kind of stay put. So real quick question, if people are paying attention, and this will tell me who's watching my whole video. <laughs> um, how do you like this camera angle better than what I did before where it was more, you know, this direction? Personally, I think this is working out a little better because it's not, it's less likely that I'm going to be, uh, bumping it with my head or getting getting stuff in the way So far I like the way this stuff works, it's kind of, I used to do this with uh, pigments and pigment binder but it used a lot of, a lot of material and it could get kind of wasteful and I didn't really like that too much, I don't like, you know, wasting too much stuff but it would really get, uh, you know, it used quite a bit. I think you know this is a little more effective now this stuff down inside of here we're gonna be able to get that but I'm gonna use a different method for that and we'll see how that works same with uh, this here the, the top parts here but see it gives you some pretty good uh, texture which is the reason I wanted to try this and so far so good okay so that's that side there let's get a little bit more up in here one of the other problems I had with uh, using the pigments and pigment binder is sometimes it would get a little it looked more smeared than clumped you know this seems to be able to hold its shape a lot better and if you hit it it doesn't become a swirl or a smear or something like that it just looks a little looks a little better and I like that I think that's a pretty good product thus far my preliminary findings are favorable okay we'll do the back here when you're doing this stuff just kind of try and think how the how mud would splatter up inside of here from the wheels I may, I may have some flawed reasoning here but like this here I think it would be clumpier down lower maybe, but not as thick as what's going to be back here getting kicked up. Because back here is where you're going to be catching it closer to flying right off the ground. As opposed to here, it's already kind of... And again, that's pretty linear right now, but that's I'm, I'm going to be using something else. So be patient and see what it looks like. So. I'm gonna, now that you see what I'm kind of doing here, I'm gonna turn this off so you don't have to watch me go through the whole shooting match and you know listen to me blab and all that and come back and we'll go on to the next step. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is using, um, this is not a new product I'm using, it is Vallejo Splash Mud in the same light brown. And 
got a brush here. You need to experiment a little bit with the brush and the amount of material on the brush to get an effect that you like. And basically, I just take a toothpick and just start flicking it on there like that. You can put as many layers as you want. And the more stuff you have on here, the bigger the splatters are going to be. So you got to be kind of careful. It gives you kind of a random effect. And as you can see, what I'm trying to do here is blend it. With the mud down here. where it's thick and then where it's kind of splattered up higher. Whoa, glad that wasn't open. And I may experiment with some other brushes here just to, there we go. Then you get kind of a splattery effect. Then I'm going to do the same thing. Underneath here. But try and go a little heavier. And it's going to take some experimentation to get it just the way I want. Because I don't want it to be stringy and weird looking. bit on there just kind of fix it number one it's underneath here so you're not gonna really see it so I'm gonna experiment with a little more and see what I can come up with okay here's what I got going on now so I've got all this uh, thick mud on here and then some of the splash mud um, were appropriate so the it's very monochromatic the the color of the uh, the mud as you can see down here I've already you know started working on this and what I'm doing is you using the Vallejo um, light sienna I'm just using my radial um, pigment brush sorry couldn't think of what it was called on all these horizontal surfaces here then I'll explain why I'm doing that and again for some of you that are longtime viewers of this channel or any other channel for that matter you'll know this isn't like any kind of groundbreaking uh, stuff that you know I came up with I mean this is taking techniques that are tried and true and just applying them so any of the horizontal surfaces or surfaces that I can get from this angle is what I'm doing here. <clears throat> Underneath here, and then I'm just applying some of this stuff on there. So, okay, that's good for now. So, the next thing I'm going to do is taking. Uh, the pigment fixer the enamel pigment fixer first of all I'm gonna fill up my little fine line applicator I'll show you the tip here in a second but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be shaken or not but I shake it 
because it does look like it has something in addition to just you know enamel thinners or whatever so I'm gonna use my eye my oops my eyedropper and put some in here okay and carefully put the lid on here without tipping that over and this is just a fine line applicator and what it is you fill this baby up and then you, you, what you have is an applicator tip like a large syringe or something it's got this that fits inside of there that keeps it clear whenever it's closed and it's all you know airtight just make sure it's snug and it comes in different sizes. This is a fine line, so this is the finest one that my local retailer has. And I got it at Hobby Lobby, and it works really good. Now here, I've already experimented a little bit. And as you can see, um, it's still a little bit uh, damp. It hasn't dried completely because this is a uh, um, enamel-based stuff. So it's not gonna dry as quickly as say, you know, an acrylic product that has alcohol in it or something. And basically all I'm gonna do is just touch the tip and apply a drop. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna do capillary action. One of the modeler's best friends, I think. It's gonna spread through that pigment and I've already experimented with it <clears throat> here now this is uh, the same exact pigment um, but I tried uh, I've tried mineral spirits odorless mineral spirits which didn't work and then uh, to me an x20 and as you can see it's smeared very easily see that comes right off so it kind of sticks it on there I guess but not to my satisfaction I need something that's going to really stick and be durable so I did the same thing on uh, the pigment here with the MIG pigment fixer and it does not come off now you could probably scrape it off with your thumbnail but as you can see it's nice and durable so that's gonna make it easier to weather it more later once it's dry to add some color variation to it and it's not gonna come off just from me handling the model. Okay. So, and the reason I'm using this type of applicator instead of a brush, I find I have a little bit more control and it doesn't um, smear the, uh, the pigments as easy, as easily. And what this is doing is it's giving some nice variation to that crusted on mud look. The nice thing is you can add more. You can put a little bit of different colors and everything else in there just to give it some variety so it doesn't just look like a monotone um, color. So it looks kind of splotchy and weird right now. And remember, you can always add more and layer it up and layer it up. And that's what you want is you want to get a lot of layers of stuff because, you know, that's how stuff builds up on vehicles, especially something that's not getting washed or maintained, you know, on a daily basis. And it's in a situation like that. So we'll let that clear or uh, dry for a bit and then come back and see what it looks like. Okay, <clears throat> what I've done is I've taken... <clears throat> excuse me ultimate weathering wash light dirt and uh, applied it on the the wheels front and back and then used a q-tip and rubbed after it was dry uh, rubbed it all off uh, just to leave it in the edges around the rims along this uh, raised ridge on the wheel or tire and then in the uh, in the tread pattern and it also leaves a nice dusty effect on the top so once that's done using the thick mud I'm just 
applying it front and back. Not a, I, I'm not getting a real big and gloppy because I just want it to be kind of like older dried mud. Getting it right up to about the edge of the tread. Like that. And then same thing in here. Getting it down inside, but I'm not getting too much on the end of the uh, this uh, axle cover or whatever it's called. I don't know the technical term for that kind of stuff. That part right there. But I'm getting it down inside getting it all around in there. I'm not worried too much about 100% coverage though because I want it to look like it's been there a while and some of it's coming off. Has come off. Coming off. Rrr. Poor grammar. And then just the same thing on this side around the edges up to about the tread line. And this is just the first stage of the weathering on the wheels. It's going to kind of mirror what I did on the bottom of the truck itself. Doing this. And then going to add some um, pigments on here to get a little, give it a little bit of variation in color. So I'm going to continue on with these. And then once these dry up, then we can take a look at the next step. All right, so I got the um, I got the uh, mud. The Vallejo Thick Mud put on the uh, wheel front and back and then what I did was I put some of the Light Sienna Vallejo Pigment on the back and um, applied my uh, pigment fixer and that's what it looks like so I'm going to do the same thing for the front and I'll kind of show you how I'm doing. I'm taking this raggedy brush and just rubbing it in there like that. I don't want a big buildup of it because I've already got the buildup from the from the um, mud mixture. And it is changing the color, but that's what I want. I'm, I'm wanting it to get a little bit, a little browner than what the uh, than what that thick mud is around the major portions of it. A little bit of the light will be around the edges kind of like it is on here. But since these wheels are like really, you know, what's rolling around in the dirt a lot, I want it to be a little, little bit darker like, like it's not, there's, you know, a little fresher biz dirt mud build up so you got that so once I get that on there like that then I'll take my applicator let's do it on this one first basically I'm just dropping it on there and letting it just flow all around just like that and then when it dries It'll look more like that, a little darker. And I'll be a happy camper. If I can get stuff, there we go. Now, if any of this gets in here, it's probably gonna obliterate It didn't. I was afraid it might uh, obliterate some of that clay wash. See how it's all wet right there? As long as you don't touch it, well, you don't have to worry about your clay wash being messed up. Because I found that if you have, uh, if you use the um, ultimate weathering wash, clay type wash on your uh, on your 
model and then you try and spray like either you know like if you try and spray a flat finish it will obliterate that that wash it just uh, pretty much washes it away or at least you know messes up the effect that you know you start out with so you just got to be careful and not disturb it if you get this on there because I guess you know it's almost like a pigment type stuff I guess because uh, once it dries it's okay so This is getting kind of low. I need to refill it. So anyway, that's what uh, that's what I'll end up with there. And once it dries, it'll look pretty good. So I'm gonna let that dry up a little bit. And while that is drying, I'm gonna start doing a little bit of uh, oil leaks and stuff like that on the vehicle. So let me get those materials ready. I can start with that. Okay, for this step, I'm going to use Vallejo engine oil stains. It's an acrylic product, so there's no stink. Doesn't smell funky or anything. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty oily looking. So let's get the old brush I use for washes. Poured some in a little container here and uh, just start. Putting some around the areas of the engine and drivetrain where there would be oil leaks and drips and stuff like that. Some on the bottom here. Looking like that. And you'll also want to do it on the back up here in some places. It's a lot of you get a lot of buildup stuff like this. Okay, I'm doing this side because it's already dry, this side's not dry yet. So I'll be doing that as well, but just uh, anywhere where there's, uh, you think there might be some oil stains. Adds another element to it. So I'm going to do some more of this around here. And then uh, come back and see what I've got. All right, so as you can see here, we've got some staining going on here, here, uh, just random places throughout the underside of the truck. So. I think that is pretty much for now at least going to uh, kind of finish up the weathering on the lower part of the vehicle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the um, wheels finish drying up a little bit more and then I will install those. So the next, uh, I'm going to end this video here with kind of mostly completing the lower part at least the primary stuff on the lower part of the truck so next video come back the wheels will be on it 
and then uh, we'll start working on some of the upper surfaces getting those dirtied up and weathered so we can move on to the stuff that goes in the back of the truck so thanks for watching plastic models by a regular dude and uh, stay tuned for the next episode and as always if you have any questions comments suggestions anything like that please put them in the comments below and i will get back to you as soon as i can so until next time i will see you all later